Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. For all things Vespa, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. So now we're on to part four of this P200 and getting it roadworthy and on the road. What am I holding in my hand? I'm holding the carburetor. It's the Del Ordo downdraft carburetor that's found on most Vespas, pretty much 1959 and up to the the last shifting Vespas. They've used the carburetor very similar to this. They've had some different variations. This is a 2424E, which is the first um, generation of the 24 millimeter carburetor. And we're gonna go through this carburetor in part four, along with overhaul the oil injection pump on this P200E. Both of those are pretty critical on a scooter that's been sitting for a while. You want to go through both these items. Uh, in part five, I'm going to overhaul the fuel tank. That, that may sound pretty silly that you need to overhaul the fuel tank, but there's quite a few parts, and I want to restore some special parts of this fuel tank as well. But right now, go over to carburetor, and then next to oil pump, we'll bolt this onto the scooter, and let's get started. So in order to prepare yourself for success of rebuilding a carburetor, you want to start with the parts, you know, might as well just have them on hand. So I have a needle here, 247652 is a needle, the original gasket set, 154754, and you can see it includes pretty much all the gaskets needed for the Delordo or Spaco SI carburetor. Uh, I'm going to have the float on hand. Uh, normally you may not need this, but might as well replace it, inexpensive part, 085293DEL. It's our part number for that. And some of the extra seals needed for the air box are included in this complete kit, part number 050274-KIT. And it's all the rubber bits for the, um, the air box. You know, I'll open that up when I go through it. Some of the other gaskets needed are included with the, the gasket kit that was used for overhauling the whole engine. So you got the oil pump gasket, you got the carburetor gasket. These are all available as separate parts as well. Um, underneath the air box, that goes underneath the air box. And then there's some various O-rings that are gonna be needed as well. So uh, I have those part numbers in the description if you wanna order those separately or need them separate from the the regular gasket set that includes all of them. Uh, typically you need to replace the air bellow. I think that's uh, 247205 is a part number for an air bellow. Usually these are pretty torn up, need replacement. And on to the basic tools needed. Nothing special for the tools. I got various flat and uh, flat bladed screwdrivers, typical wrenches to dry the needle out of the um, to get the float needle out, get a little punch, or you can improvise with a real small screwdriver, a little hammer. Nothing special for the tools. Any basic workshop, you should have those tools. Uh, also want to have some fine copper wire to clean out the jets in this carburetor. Um, you're going to need 11 millimeter socket to tighten the, the bolts that hold the carburetor in place. But nothing special there for the tools, no specialty tools. So I have the carburetor out. You can watch the rebuild section on how to remove the carburetor. Pretty straightforward. There's a pair of um, special nuts that hold it down to a pair of studs on the engine. The later P PX200s, they, they had an Allen, a special Allen screw that they use. But you pretty much have the pair of special um, nuts that hold it down with the washers, get those out of the way. And everything's pretty clean here. I'm not gonna ultrasonic clean this. Sometimes I would ultrasonic clean a carburetor. Just gonna use regular old carburetor and choke cleaner available at any auto parts store. Um, this carburetor is unique, just found on the first year uh, P200, 1978 and 1977 uh, Rally 200. It's the Del Ordo SI2424E carburetor. I suggest this 24 millimeter Venturi uh, found on the 200cc. Is what's unique about it is it's got 
a solid idle jet with the air passage for the idle jet cast into the body. Later, they move this air passage into the idle jet, so it's a different type of idle jet. Uh, it is possible to retrofit the later style idle jets by plugging that hole, I've done it on my own scooter, but I wanna leave this scooter all original and leave these uh, parts to it. The later P200Es that were sold in the United States came with a 20 millimeter carb, something that wasn't found on any other uh, markets, but they were trying to clean up the emissions from the engine on those last year um, scooters. So they had a pretty lean running 20 millimeter carb. Um, kind of interesting that they did that. But, you know, help, help clean them up. I don't know if it was just for California. Also slowed down the scooters a little bit. A little, little bit on the lean side seized up. We're gonna go through taking this apart. I don't know, I'll talk about some of the facts of this thing, so. Basically just a flat bladed screwdriver is all you need. You know, all the screws on this are gonna be just flat. And nothing special here. You wanna take off this, this fuel filter. This is the second fuel filter. The primary fuel filter is found in the fuel tank. The second one's on top of the carburetor. I see a lot of people put another fuel filter in line on the uh, fuel line. Not a good idea with these scooters, not much room. Uh, where they route the fuel line, and you don't want to uh, impede the flow of the fuel on these any more than they already are. It's pretty critical on routing the fuel line to begin with. Um, so something to keep in mind, don't think about putting a third fuel filter, not needed. You replace the, this fuel filter if needed. But everything comes apart pretty straightforward. Gaskets, you know, obviously I get new ones there. Uh, that pries right off. Somebody's been in here because it doesn't have the original fuel filter gasket. There's the rubber one. That's the fuel filter itself. Um, this is the little gasket. Normally that was a paper gasket. I'll probably put the paper gasket back in because that's original to what this carburetor would have taken. The later uh, Spaco and later Del Ordo carbs did use that rubber gasket. Both those gaskets are included in the, um, the gasket kit. Uh, this whole float lifts out. And you got the float right here. You have a, one side with a split, the other side solid. Um, you wanna dry the pin out from the side that has a split. So let's see if I can do this where the camera can get it. It's kind of a little awkward for me, but a little bit of a shadow. But just take a, a pin, give it a couple little taps. You could do it with a, a fine point screwdriver, even probably a paper clip would be enough. Uh, the pin, pin's got very low miles or hours on it, not really worried about it. Uh, this float does look like it's in pretty nice shape. Probably could be reused, no problem. Gaskets all pull off. So this is referred to as the float top. That's your, um, your idle uh, fuel mixture screw right there. Uh, we'll take the slide apart. Got the pair of screws here. And you got to, this is a little bit spring loaded because there's the return springs up against that little cover there. So it pops right out. No big deal. That thing's a little sticky. I could tell it's just got old varnishy feel. Spring comes out. This little rod lifts out. This is a pull rod. Make sure that pole rod's nice and straight, looks really good. That's the original one to the scooter. See a lot of times they're pretty trashed and wasted. I'll take the pull rod and pull that little gasket out. And that's included in the kit of parts. It's so your slide. Uh, this thing has very low hours. It looks in perfect shape. Sometimes you'll see pretty heavy scoring on these. If it's worn out, it is a replaceable part. This is a, a A492 dash two slide. There's a couple different slide um, numbers and it's this cutout cutaway right here and a little uh, taper and sometimes they'll have the corner cut out for the idle passage and they have different different slides for different calibrations. And, uh, this is your your choke right here or it just essentially opens an extra circuit for extra fuel when you start the scooter cold. 
And you look at the end, the plunger, make sure the rubber's still intact, looks good. Typically, you don't see problems with those. Uh, your idle speed screw, you can pull this out. You could also leave it in place. It's not gonna hurt anything when you're cleaning the carburetor body, but uh, certainly can pull that out. And the last two items remaining on this carburetor body are the, the three jets. So you have the idle jet. And being a 200 cc, it should be a probably a 50 or 52 or 55. It's got a 50 in there. The numbers, I think the camera's gonna get, but it's engraved in the jet. Um, you know, you could, it may be, I think it's a 50, 120 or something is found in the, um, the later carburetors because the 120 indicates the air jet size. I'm not gonna go into tuning these carburetors. I think there's some other uh, references for that kind of stuff, a little beyond the scope of this video. Uh, you got the, the main jet is 116. If it had no oil injection, it'd be a 118. It's got a BE4 mixer. Originally that was a BE3, so I don't know if somebody's changed that. It will work fine with the BE4. Um, and a 120 air top. And I see typically you could do a BE4 120 or you could do a BE3, which is the calibration of these little holes, and a 160 top. It should work fine in there. 116 is ideal for a, a stock engine for the main jet. And the last jet. Typically, you don't really ever mess with these. They, it does have uh, a calibration on it. This is your choke jet. And that's a 60. And typically, they're always 60s, I think, except for on the smaller, smaller carburetors. So you got the three jets. This all separates if you do want to clean it. They just, they're all, they just pull right out. Uh, this one's a little harder to get out. That's not going to work. I was, thought I'd give it a shot. Never tried it, but you put something in the hole and you could twist the, um, the jet out of the, um, the mixer. And my hands are a little greasy, but don't want to take pliers to them, but there's all your jets, needle, and a carburetor body. Let's have a little tray to capture whatever um, carburetor cleaner that I'm using. So you just spray everything off. This is not too varnishy. If there's a lot of varnish in there, you may want to put some of this solution in there and just let it soak. Try not to get this in your eyes. I want to wear some glasses. All the um, passages, you want to spray through any of the passages. Um, if there's anything stubborn, with the, the fluid on there, you could just scrub it with a little nylon bristle or a brass bristle brush, and that will loosen up any of the dirt. And this, this carburetor is you know, very clean to begin with, so it's not, not really a problem. Carburetor body, that is, so. Um, sometimes if it's really grungy in there, you can take something to kind of break up the grunge, like just a screwdriver. Uh, certainly can get an, a, a brush in there, bottle brush or some sort. And you can see kind of the residue in there. Fluid's a little bit dirty, so. And once you got this pretty cleaned out, try and get it in my the camera or my eyes. Just want to kind of blow it all out. And that pretty much is about as far as you want to need to take it. And it looks pretty clean there. I don't see any residue coming up on my fingers. So we're good here. So uh, All the other metal pieces, I would be careful with the, the choke because there's rubber and um, the carburetor cleaner will attack that. But everything else, you just put in your tray of uh, fluid. Kind of let it soak a little bit and just clean them off and one by one. Even the screws, might as well get those clean. 
And the last little guy, which is your filter. All you gotta do is spray that out. This is replaceable. You can get a new one if there's any little tears in it. It may be advisable just to replace it. Just use a nylon bristle brush to break up any varnish that may be on it. And again, with the air, just give it a little. You know, if you don't have shop air, you could certainly just let it dry out on its own. Definitely makes the job a little easier when you have air on there, so. And I like the magnetic tray because it kind of holds most of the steel parts in place while you could give them a gentle, you know, scrubbing here. Kind of like doing the, the equivalent of doing dishes. One thing to look in there, make sure there's no residue in the bottom. You may need to dig it out in the bottom of that well. That's like a little res, you know, we'll collect any, any um, solids. Another thing you want to do with the carburetor top is this is your needle seat. You take a small Phillips screwdriver and just drop that down there and don't even put any pressure. Just lightly ream that with a, um, the, a, flat, Phillip, a small Phillips screwdriver. Shouldn't have any problems there. Other parts are cleaning up just nicely, so. Gaskets, you can just discard those if you got a new gas kit. Don't, no need to save any of that old stuff. And I'll just lightly blow this stuff off. And last, we got the jets. So you want to take some copper wire, just like the stranded copper wire. It's all, all you need really for clean, cleaning jets out. Um, and the idea is you, you know, a larger main jet, you could put a couple filaments through it and just give it a light reaming like through the, and it will just break up any of the crud that's in there. And before we put these back in, we'll give them a, um, a, a little flush with a carburetor cleaner, but any of the holes, you could just poke them all through. And same thing, just kind of ream each of the holes out. This thing's really nice shape, so not really an issue there. The idle jet's a little tricky because it's going to be the smallest one. You're just going to want to take one little filament and just go right down thing, give it a little ream. And then you got the choke jet. And this one will go all the way through, if I recall. And you'll, you could see if, you know, watch out with the holes on the side, not to get this in your eyes, but a lot of times you get each one of those jets, you'll, you'll be able to see it flow through. And that's pretty much all you need to do for the jets. And they're, they're really, really grungy. You may soak them for a couple hours at night. And I got the air jet, does it? So that's pretty much it for to clean it. And you can see the, the, the fluids got kind of a lot of um, kind of varnish stuff in it. Normally that fluid's uh, clear. 
the, the carburetor cleaning fluid. So you got your new carburetor set, dump all the gaskets out. It's going to be a couple extra gaskets we're not going to use for this uh, carburetor. If you have a, a very old carburetor, it may have a gasket like this. That's not going to be used. Um, the, the fuel filter tops, if you have an, um, a newer carburetor, you'd use those two. So we're not going to use those two pieces. But if it was a newer one that had the aluminum. And the last remaining gaskets, so that's, that's what we're going to um, use the assemble the carburetor here. So start in the reverse order, we'll put the jets back in. So the choke jet, we'll assemble the stack of um, the air jet, the, the mixer tube, and the main jet. And you just press them back, back in. And even if they're not all the way in, when you uh, thread the thing back together, we'll tighten that jet and last the idle jet. And just snug them in, use the correct size screwdriver. This is a little bit smaller screwdriver. Jets are back in. Next we'll take this uh, mixture screw here. You want to wipe the needle, needle tip. You know, it was cleaned. Um, Put the little spring back on. This is referred to as a coarse thread uh, idle mixture screw. The later, later ones had a, a brass screw that was fine threads and they usually have a hex on the end that's longer. This one's got like kind of a flat blade screw and a, it's knurled. So go all the way in and you can see the screw. We're going to go a half turn, one turn, and about one and a half with a coarse one. The, the fine thread, I think you go two and a half turns out to start. And that's just a starting point. Um, we'll go ahead and put the slide back together. So you need a uh, spring, the, the pull rod, and this little um, gasket here. So the gasket drops into this little slot. It's a little difficult to do with the gloves that are dissolving a little bit. You take this little ball and push it through that gasket. It takes a little bit of force. There's a little bit of friction of the, the rod going through the rubber seal there. And then we'll hook th this in place. Oops, let me try again. Trying to keep my hands out of the way. And some, some springs have this little hook on it, some don't. There's a little rod and then just go ahead and hold that like such. Take the carburetor and drop the slide in. And now you can get the cover back on. And you need to hold it in place while you get the screw started because there's the, the spring resistance right there. All right, we'll take your idle speed adjustment screw. It goes in the center hole here and left the spring in place. It kind of stays there. And I'll look down at the slide and just open it. You're not going to see this in the camera, but right when the slide starts to open, that's a good starting point. I can just see a little bit of air through the backside of the camera. I can get that, but you know, slide opens and there's just a little bit of an air gap. And that's just a good starting point. Obviously, uh, it will need to be tweaked once you get the motor running. Put the, the choke back on, real simple. There's a single uh, flat, flat headed screw there. There's your choke mechanism, it's working fine there. And last, we'll go ahead and assemble the, the float top. So you take the gasket, start with the gasket, drop the gasket in place. Uh, we're going to get the brand new float.
take the needle and just drop it in that little slot right there. Go ahead and drop that in place right there. And you kind of just hold that and line it up and then go ahead and get the pin started. Start on the side that doesn't have the slot, so we'll, it will go right through just no problem. And there may be a little bit of friction going against the slotted side. Just give it a couple little taps and now the floats. It's not adjustable float height. If, you know, some carburetors, you can adjust the float height, not on these. Go ahead and drop that in place. The longer screw goes down here. The shorter screw, they have a wave washer, by the way. Both of them have a wave washer. And let's go between the two and we'll get it, tighten them up. All right, now we'll assemble the fuel filter. So make sure that's perfectly clean inside. Put the paper gasket on this style cap here. We'll drop the filter in. So the filter just drops right on top of this little um, uniquely shaped uh, little guy right there. It fits pretty tight. We'll drop the filter cap on. The screw with uh, the paper washer. The way to tell if you have, if you need the later gasket, if that has like a little step on it, it means you use the rubber gasket and aluminum washer for the top. This flat style one, you use the two paper gaskets, which is pretty much all the older carburetors. Yeah, I think sometime in the 90s or late 80s is when they, they switched over. in the 90s or something, or late 80s. I've never seen it on the Koza carburetor, it was the first time. So tighten this pretty tight with that style of gasket. Um, don't want to tighten so much that it splits the paper gasket. Uh, flip your carburetor over, you know, remove it. That's your vent. There's a rubber gasket that just slides right on top of this thing here. And last but not least, not necessary to put this on because typically I'll hook this up. There's a small paper gasket, the fuel line banjo, and then the larger gasket goes right on there. And whoopee, I don't have any parts left over, so I must have got this right. Um, we'll set this aside at this point and we'll bolt it onto the motor after we get the oil pump. Uh, overhauled and set those up. Split washer, flat washer, if those are in poor ship, shape, I would replace them. So here's the air box. It essentially houses the carburetor, seals it from the outside, along with the air filter, has a connection to the rubber air bellows, allow the motor to breathe from inside the frame. Pretty unique design found on the large frame Vespas. It's cast aluminum. Along with those functions, if you have an oil injected scooter, which is you know starting in the 67, they started adding oil injection to some of the scooters, it will house an oil pump. Uh, the license of the design is uh, Spica, who makes a mechanical fuel injection in Italy. It's a very robust design. Uh, typically, you don't need to overhaul these, they just work. Not too many problems mechanically go, go wrong is what typically happens is you end up with a loose oil line or a break in the old oil line and that may cause a failure. But, but for the most part, I like to keep these on the scooters. It's, back in the day, a lot of people would take them out. It's inconvenient, the premix uh, makes it a little more convenient. So you're gonna need a real fine flat blade screwdriver to get these three screws that hold this oil pump into the air box. And they're pretty tight. I don't think this one's ever been out. There we go. I'm just gonna go all the way around and break all the screws free. There we go. There. 
Go ahead and remove the three screws. They have little wave washers that, along with these three millimeter or four millimeter screws. And go ahead and lift the oil pump cover out. You can see the oil oozing out of the one uh, check valve there. That's a good thing. It means it's all working. Um, there's the cover. You have uh, the gasket. It may take a little bit to get out. You may need to scrape it if it's really stuck in there. Looks like I'll be able to peel it out of the air box. No problem there. And this is called the swish plate pump. And just to show you, it, it goes up and down. It spins around and there's a taper to it. And each time it pumps, it pushes oil through this check valve. There's a ball check valve in there. So still some residual oil in there, kind of shows how it works. And there's gonna be a spring and sometimes a thrust washer as well. Sometimes I've seen they don't have the thrust washer. So they've changed the design over the years. So this little screw retains the cast iron uh, pump body. There's usually a little tab that's uh, located on one of the flats of the screw. And you can just tap that, tap it open there. And you could either take a wrench or just a large screwdriver and loosen the screw. It's a special type of screw. It's got like a little pin on that tip. You remove the, um, the locking plate as well. Now we'll be able to remove the, uh, the pump body itself. So you want to carefully grab this you know, with the needle nose and pull it straight out. And take care not to mar it up. It should just pull right out. And there's going to be a single O-ring located on this. And you could just use a pick and dig this out. Usually that O-ring is probably original to the, the, um, to the oil pump. So it just pulls right off, no big deal there. I can tell the thing's hard. Uh, we can clean this out you know, with the carburetor and choke cleaner here. And go ahead and blow this. And the last, last part of the oil pump is that check valve. And generally I just recommend not messing with it unless there's a reason to, to dismantle it or if you can't get the oil pump working. Uh, there's a nylon bushing that retains a small spring with a check valve at the very bottom, which is just a ball, a small ball bearing. You could get in there and pry this out carefully with a, um, with a pick and get that out of there. But typically you could just clean the in internals of the oil pump with carburetor, carburetor spray. You know, each of the passages. And if you put your thumb over there and blow through with uh, the blow gun, you'll be able to clean out the, the check valve as well. And be careful not to blow through all these too much with that check valve. I've seen where if you put too much pressure, we'll just blow the check valve out of the body of the, um, the air box and you lose the parts. Probably will never find them, they're so small. Um, but that's pretty much all you need to do for cleaning up the, the oil pump. We'll take the new O-ring and you just pretty much stretch it right over this body right here and you can go either direction. Maybe it's easier to go from the bottom and just slide it up onto the, the oil pump body there. Take the switch plate don't necessarily need to clean this off with uh, carburetor clean, but you could just wipe it with a clean rag. 
and make sure it turns freely in there. It's got a, um, a not a tight fit, but a very uh, small clearance fit. That's why you want to take extra care when you're taking it apart with the needle nose in there. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind when you put this back in, the way it keys is there's this little slot right here that this that screw, um, that little plunger lines up with it. So when we put it back in, you want to key that because if it's in the wrong position, the oil pump's just not going to function. Uh, I have two stroke oil right here, so I'll prime everything kind of oil it all up before we put it back together. You want to do that with pretty much all the oil pump parts. Um, that little, that larger hole is kind of, we'll put it at 12 o'clock, you know, relative to where I'm holding the, the body. Everything's quite a tight fit on these oil pumps. And once you get started, it will, should go right in. And there's even a little bit of resistance because the oil in the bottom is making like a hydraulic seal. So and if you hold it long enough, it will line up. And I see the holes perfect right there. Go ahead and put this locking tab back in place. Tighten the screw. And if it's in the right position, the screw will bottom out against that, that tab washer right there. So turn that and one of the flats lines up with one of those tabs. Take a small needle nose and go, go ahead and fold up the tab. Now that's locked in place. Put the washer back in the oil pump. Put the spring in there. We'll prime the oil pump, pumping some oil through there. You see it oozes out both the check valve and that hole up there. Don't worry if it's extra oil coming out. And put your finger over that and you see it pump out of that hole. So it's good to have everything primed as you're assembling the oil pump. Kind of get fresh oil in there. The last part is this cap. It looks pretty clean here. There should be some grease. There's a little bit of the original grease from the factory. We'll just wipe it all out. Doesn't need to really be cleaned all that much. Just take some type of uh, general purpose grease. I like to use this Maxima waterproof grease. And all you need is like a little smear right on top of that, um, that pin. And this is whatever the throttle position, this is what changes how much uh, pump stroke that the, the pump operates at. So get the gasket. You can put a little bit of grease on the gasket to hold that in place as well. I don't want to clog it up with a bunch of grease, but so pretty much the gasket drops in place. And now we'll go ahead and put the oil pump back together. Pretty, pretty simple design. Make sure that's on the right side. And we'll just go ahead and drop that down. Make sure the gasket kind of stays in place. You may need to um, use a pick to kind of steer the gasket around. Drop one screw in to start to get all the screws started. So just get it started, move on to the next screw, make sure the hole lines up. And the last screw, which is the hidden one back in here. Get my hands out of the way. And now that they're all uh, bottomed out, we'll just go around and 
snug all the screws. And again, it's got a, a, it's a real thin flat blade screwdriver. If you don't have something like this, you can take a junky screwdriver, grind it down, file it down, make it so it fits in those uh, real fine screws that they use. Next, we'll go ahead and test the oil pump. Pretty easy to do. Inside the engine, this is the oil pump drive gear right here. And that's what engages with this, um, the oil pump. And I already see it oozing out of that right there. So we're already doing pretty good. So this is the track that the oil goes down. You could prime the oil right here, add a little bit of oil to it. And just keep on rotating counter uh, clockwise and you see the oil starting to ooze through that track. And we know it's, the oil pump's gonna function. And we'll do uh, a little bit more priming once we get the, um, this installed on the engine. So that pretty much sums up overhaul on the oil pump. Pretty simple design, robust and reliable. Uh, not always 100% needed, but you definitely always want to verify the oil pump functions uh, before you, you know, once you get an engine started, maybe even put some oil with the, in the first uh, tank full of gas, because if the oil pump's not primed, it may not deliver oil to the engine for the first couple of minutes of operation. So go ahead and replace all the seals that are part of the uh, air box itself with this kit here. This is the, the rubber that goes around the air box itself. This is the mixture screw cap. They call that the summer plug. This is redundant. That's that seal on the bottom of the carburetor. It's also included with the carburetor, so we're not gonna need that. And the top hat for the idle speed screw. So starting with the air box lid, it's the stamp steel part right here. Go ahead and push this gasket right through, or this top hat, through the idle speed mixture hole here. And it may take a little bit, you may need to put a little grease on it, but it's looking like it's pushed through all the way there. This is, I like in the books, the Italian books, they call it a summer plug in the conversion. It's really, uh, I would call it like a winter plug. Say if you had a difficult engine to start and you need to spray some starting spray uh, directly into the carburetor, that's what this little cap is for right here. Then we flip it over and you can see that it's all the way seated. And last we have this gasket. So I start with a seam on the outside, kind of on that long edge, and just work this piping all the way around here. So it will just stay right in place on the air box here. Don't need to put any grease. Typically it's always a little long. Um, if you don't have oil injection, it's definitely gonna be too long. This one's perfect actually, it closes up right there. If it's a little too long, you could always take a wire cutters and clip it, but that's the, the gasket that will seal this lid. All right, so let's start putting this back together. I have the oil pump shaft out because I was testing the oil pump. And if you look down the motor, I see a hole going into the crankcase. I typically like to rotate the motor so the rotary valve completely covers the, um, the intake there. Don't want to have any of that risk of dropping anything down there. Obviously cover it up if you're putting the scooter away. Put a small amount of grease on this, uh, the shaft and the gear, you know, just only needs a small amount. This little worm gear here pulls oil up. So you kind of want to make sure it has, there's grease on it, but not, don't want to pack that groove all the way with grease because that pulls uh, the gearbox oil up and lubricates some of the parts of the, uh, of the oil pump. So it drops right in, nothing special there. This is the nicer treated gasket. Don't really need to put anything on it. It just drops right on. Uh, make sure the surface is of course clean. And next we'll go ahead and drop the air box on. So it just drops right on. And there's the pair of studs just pull right up. You might see that kind of doesn't want to sit right. You may need to turn the motor over, which in turn 
you know, turns that gear that drives the oil pump. Make sure it sits flat. It's very likely that's not going to sit flat and it may be the oil pump's not seated. So I'm going to drop that little small screw in. On the older models, a different style screw, these uh, P's, they went to like a cheese head screw. So you don't need to get too crazy. It's just there to hold the air box on. So that's, that's in place. Next, we have a paper gasket for the bottom of the carburetor. This gasket, I'll put a small amount of grease on it. It's a paper gasket. Don't need to get too much on it, but it helps seal it up. That little slot right there is where the oil um, is, feeds through the, uh, the carburetor. And just for the first start, if you have oil on hand, it's a good idea just to give it like one little squirt. Don't need much in there, just initial prime of oil before the oil pump can deliver. We have my carburetor, have those special bolts. It's got the split washer and then the flat washer, so drop it on both both um, mounting holes. Next, you have this little rod right here. That's a pull rod. And you have this little hole right here on the uh, oil pump. And the oil pump has a spring that wants to pull the carburetor open. It's kind of the opposite of the carburetor spring. So let's see if I can do this. So you want to hook this little Let's see if I can get that in. It's going to be. And go ahead and, oops, this thing wants to rotate around. Let's give it another shot. And using both hands. There we go. So now it's dropped on and the oil, oil pumps hooked up to the um, cover. Take 11 millimeter quarter inch drive uh, uh, ratchet and you'll need a small extension typically. This extension might be a little too long, but I can use this extended socket. We'll do the trick as well. So I have that one snug, just hand tight, then move on to the back, hand tight that one as well. So and if you want to torque this with a torque wrench, no more than 11 foot pounds because the problem with these carburetors, if you over torque them, you'll warp the body of the carburetor. And if they're not tight enough, they tend to want to come loose. And they just happen to come loose. This is part of a regular tune up on these scooters. You want to go in there and check the carburetor. Um, so it's just starting to, you can feel it starting to pull the carburetor down. I think it's bottomed out the washer. We move on to this one. Just going between the two, and that's about 11 foot pounds right there. And I can tell you one way you'll know if it's too tight. If you over tighten it, the throttle will not return. And it's got a little bit of resistance there, and that's normal. But we're good, it's returning right to the stop. So, uh, next. We'll go ahead and hook up the choke cable. Uh, that goes through this upper hole right below the oil line. And you can see it's pretty close to the, the eyelet there. I'll take a flat blade screwdriver and I tend to just like to get this right behind there. And you'll just hook the wire. Let's see if the camera can get this. Right. And just get the, 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 the wire kind of onto that hook. then test the choke operation. If the choke's still got the clip, it's gonna stay open. That's the way it should be. And then when you hit the choke close, it should close all the way. See how there's a little free play in that little arm? 
If it's hanging open just like that, you're always going to have running prawns. It's going to run too rich. So all the way open, close. Always want to verify that that works right. I've seen scooters where the choke stays open. It's always running rich or um, where the choke won't stay open. That's always a problem as well. Uh, I'm not going to put the air box uh, lid on just yet, nor the air filter because I do want to hook up the fuel line and oil line along with the the throttle cable, which I'll do right now, no big deal. Get the throttle cable, pretty, pretty similar. Just go ahead and thread that through. And from this side, you can, let's see if I could do this and capture it in the camera here. So I don't have the air bellow in there yet. Let's get it close. So you can see that little barrel. Let's get it in the slot. It needs a little bit of lubrication. You know, and a lot of times once it's running, everything will free up, but you definitely don't want it sticking. It's sticking just a tiny bit right now. We'll see how that is when it's um, running. So, um, the throttle free play, that's about right. It's a original cable, but it's good. This is your adjuster right here if you need to adjust the free play. Put the air bellows on a little bit later. No problem there. Um, that's pretty much it when it comes to overhauling the carburetor and the oil pump. Uh, next video, we'll go ahead and overhaul the fuel tank. Watch that in part five. I hope everybody found that pretty useful. Whether you're just interested in vintage bikes or want to get into them, or you just found a nice barn find and want to get it running. Of course, you need two things. You're going to need spark and you're going to need fuel. And if it's been sitting for a while, that carburetor is going to be quite gummed up. But amazing with these vintage Vespas, I have seen them sit as long as 10 years with some fuel in them. This carburet, that carburetor design is a lot better than some of the modern carburetors. Um, they could sit with old fuel and unbelievably they'll still start. Uh, check us out on the web for all the parts you'd ever need for a job like this, scooterwest.com. If you're looking to buy a new scooter or come by our dealership, Vespa Motorsport here in San Diego, California. This is Robot from Vespa Motorsport. Until next time, check us out on part five.